Ludwig Schlaffler was a Swiss mathematician, specializing in geometry and complex analysis who was one of the key figures in developing the notion of higher dimensional spaces. The concept of multidimensionality has come to play a pivotal role in physics, and is a common element in science fiction, life in career, youth and education. Ludwig spent most of his life in Switzerland. He was born in Graswil, his mother's hometown. The family then moved to the nearby Bergdorf, where his father worked as a tradesman. His father wanted Ludwig to follow her in his footsteps, but Ludwig was not cut out for practical work. In contrast, because of his mathematical gifts, he was allowed to attend the gymnasium in Bern in 1829. In 1831 he transferred to the academy in Bern for further studies. By 1834 the academy had become the new Universität Bern, where he started studying theology. Teaching after his graduation in 1836, he was appointed a secondary school teacher in Thun. He stayed there until 1847, spending his free time studying mathematics and botany while attending the university in Bern once a week. A turning point in his life came in 1843. Schlaffler had planned to visit Berlin and become acquainted with its mathematical community, especially Jacob Steiner, a well-known Swiss mathematician. But unexpectedly Steiner showed up in Bern and they met. Not only was Steiner impressed by Schlafly's mathematical knowledge, he was also very interested in Schlafly's fluency in Italian and French. Steiner proposed Schlafler to assist his Berlin colleagues Carl Gustav Jacob Jacobi, Peter Gustav Lejeune de Ricklet, Carl Wilhelm Borchardt and himself as an interpreter on a forthcoming trip to Italy. Steiner sold this idea to his friends on the following way, which indicates Schlafler must have been somewhat clumsy at daily affairs. Warren der den Berlin erfreund und den Neugeworben en Razor gefor erten durch die Wörter an Pries, der SEI ein Land like a Mathematiker bei Bern. Für die Welt ein Essel, aber Sprachen lerner wie ein Kinderspiel, den Walten sie als Dolmetscher mit sich nehmen. ADB, English Translation. While he praised, recommended the new travel companion to his Berlin friends with the words that he was a provincial mathematician working near Bern, and asked for the world, but that he learned languages like child's play, and that they should take him with them as a translator. Schlaffler accompanied them to Italy, and benefited much from the trip. They stayed for more than six months, during which time Schlaffler even translated some of the other's mathematical works into Italian. Later life Schlaffler kept up a correspondence with Steiner till 1856. The vistas that had been opened up to him encouraged him to apply for a position at the university in Bern in 1847, where he was appointed in 1848. He stayed until his retirement in 1891, and spent his remaining time studying Sanskrit and translating the Hindu scripture Rig Veda into German, until his death in 1895. Higher Dimensions Schlaffler is one of the three architects of multidimensional geometry, together with Arthur Cayley and Bernhard Riemann. Around 1850 the general concept of Euclidean space had not been developed, but linear equations in variables were well understood. In the 1840s William Rowan Hamilton had developed his Quaternions and John T. Graves and Arthur Cayley the Octonians. The latter two systems worked with bases of four elements, and suggested an interpretation analogous to the Cartesian coordinates in three-dimensional space. From 1850 to 1852 Schlafler worked on his magnum opus, Theory der VL Farken Continuitit, in which he initiated the study of the linear geometry of dimensional space. He also defined the dimensional sphere and calculated its volume. He then wanted to have this work published. It was sent to the Academy in Vienna, but was refused because of its size. Afterwards it was sent to Berlin, with the same result. After a long bureaucratic pause, Schlaffler was asked in 1854 to write a shorter version, but this he understandably did not. 
Steiner then tried to help him getting the work published in Krell's journal, but somehow things didn't work out. The exact reasons remain unknown. Portions of the work were published by Kali in English in 1860. The first publication of the entire manuscript was only in 1901, after Schlafly's death. The first review of the book then appeared in the Dutch mathematical journal NIEUW Archief Vordo Wiskunder in 1904, written by the Dutch mathematician Peter Hendrik Schouter. During this period, Riemann held his famous habilitations Vortrag über die Hypothesen Welcher der Geometrie zu Grunder Legion in 1854, and introduced the concept of a dimensional manifold. The concept of higher dimensional spaces was starting to flourish. Below is an excerpt from the preface to Theorie der VL Farken Continuität. Anzeiger einer Abhandlung über die Theorie der VL Farken Continuität die Abhandlung. Diakir der Kaiserlichen Akademie der Wissenschaft in Vorsulagen die Ära Hab in Thaltein und Versuch. Einen neuen Zweig der Analysis zu begründen und zu bearbeiten, Welcher, gleich sah meiner analytische Geometry von Dimensionen, die Genigen der Eben und des Rames als Spezial vor der Führer in Sicken the Alter. Ich nenne den Selben Theorie der VL Farken Continuität überhaupt in dem Selben Sinne. We man zum Beispiel die Geometrie des Rames einer Theorie der Dreifachen Continuität nennen kann. We in dieser eine Gruppe von Wörtern der Dreikoordinaten einen Punkt bestimmt. So soll in Jena eine Gruppe gegebener Wörter der Variable einer Losung bestimmen. It gebraucht diesen Ausdruck. Weil man bei einer oder mehreren Gleichung und mit vielen Variablen jede Genie Gender Gruppe von Wörtern aus so nennt, das und von Licht der Benennung, L-I-E-G-T-N-U-R darin, das ich sie aus not bei Behalte, wenn gar keine Gleichung zwischen den Variablen gegeben ist, in diesem Fall in einer ich dargesem Theatale Losung und die Fasch Totalität sind hingegen Gleichung und gegeben, so heiß BZW, dargesem Theatire Losung und Fakes, 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 Continuum. Aus der Vorstellung der Ulsatigen Continuität der in einer Totalität und Tholten in Losung und Entwickelt sich die Genage der Unabhängige Katira, gegen Satigen Lage von dem System der Gebrochten Variablen, insofern der Transformation neu Variablen und IHRE Steltraten Konnen, dieser Unabhängige Kate spricht sich aus in der Unveranderlichkeit dessen. Was ich den Abstands fire gegeben a losung manenner und im einfixten fall durch definera. In dem ich gleich zittig das system der variable nine orthogonal is heiser. English translation. The treatise I have the honor of presenting to the Imperial Academy of Science here, is an attempt to found and develop a new branch of analysis that would, as it were, be a geometry of dimensions containing the geometry of the plane and space as special cases for, I call this the theory of multiple continuity in generally the same sense in which one can call the geometry of space that of triple continuity, like in that theory the group of values of its coordinates determines a point. So in this one a group of given values of the variables will determine a solution. I use this expression. Because one also calls every sufficient group of values thus in the case of one or more equations with many variables, the only thing unusual about this naming is that I keep it when no equations between the variables is given whatsoever. In this case I call the total of solutions the fold totality, whereas when equations are given, the total of their solutions is called respectively fold, 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 continuum. From the notion of the solutions contained in a totality comes forth that of the independence of their relative positions in the system of variables, used, insofar as new variables could take their place by transformation. This independence is expressed in the inalterability of that, 
which I call the distance between two given solutions and define in the easiest case by, while at the same time I call a system of variables orthogonal, we can see how he is still thinking of points in dimensional space as solutions to linear equations, and how he is considering a system without any equations, thus obtaining all possible points of the, as we would put it now. He disseminated the concept in the articles he published in the 1850s and 1860s, and it matured rapidly. By 1867 he starts an article by saying, we consider the space of tuples of points. This indicates not only that he had a firm grip on things, but also that his audience did not need a long explanation of it. Polytopes. In theory der VL Farken continuitit he goes on to define what he calls polyschemes, nowadays called polytopes, which are the higher dimensional analogues to polygons and polyhedra. He develops their theory and finds, among other things, the higher dimensional version of Euler's formula. He determines the regular polytopes, i.e., the dimensional cousins of regular polygons and platonic solids. It turns out there are six in dimension 4 and 3 in all higher dimensions. Although Schlafler was familiar to his colleagues in the second half of the century, especially for his contributions to complex analysis, his early geometrical work didn't get proper attention for a long time. At the beginning of the 20th century, Peter Hendrik Schauter started to work on polytopes together with Alicia Ballstadt. She reproved Schlafly's result on regular polytopes for dimension 4 only and afterwards rediscovered his book. Later Willem Abraham Wichethoff studied semi-regular polytopes and this work was continued by H.S.M. Coxeter, John Conway and others. There are still many problems to be solved in this area of investigation opened up by Ludwig Schlafler.